What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milling, and the villain for the trailer. We are back on Chorus Party Blood Drive. I told y'all I am addicted to this game. I can't stop playing it. Last episode, Magari confirmed that um, we can still save the world. We, The Book of Shadows was trapped inside of us. We had to literally cut ourselves open and take it out. Sachiko healed us afterwards. And Sachiko has passed on. She's, 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 um, she's passed on to wherever she's going after rewinding time and giving us, you know, giving us enough time to basically save everybody who died the episode before last. So now we're getting into chapter eight. Ties severed, ties mended. Ooh, okay. Very interesting title. Whoa! What is this? The floors and the walls are completely covered in... Uh, I don't even want to know what. The school's still here at least. So time really does seem to have reverted. But this is definitely very different. What was that one theory I was reading about? If time has ever turned back, you leap over the rails into the whirlpool of destiny or something? Things will never be exactly the same. Hey, just like Book of Shadows, another tremor. I need to hurry. That light I saw means the seventh pillar is being born. If I don't intervene, Misuto will use his false Book of Shadows to destroy everything all over again. Saving comes before everything. Oh my goodness. Dang, so the fences are still going to be going crazy in here? The door has been eaten by the Nirvana. It'll likely never open again. All right, so I have to go this way. Bro, all this dang glass. Y'all want me to fall into it so freaking badly, don't you? I'm not going to. Oh! It's a lot easier to see the tripwire now. I think I stepped on a tripwire. Man, this is like chapter five, like with all the, with all the dead people. Hold on, what Kendrick say? I see dead people. You got that big smile on your face, like this is like a, a good situation or something. You should be looking depressed right now. Dang, man, that's my boy Yoshi, uh, Yoshi, Yoshikazu. Dang, man, they did him dirty. Even he couldn't avoid being a becoming a victim in here just like everyone else. Goodness, Ayumi, you have no stamina. Here we go. <laughs> How marvelous is the seventh pillar, the Sephiroth of knowledge. I made this happen with the power of my book of shadows. What in the world? It all begins now. Time to break this wall down and heavenly host with it. And erase you as well, Kuan Niwa. One stone to kill all so many birds. Very nice. Good boy. To bitch with you, Heavenly Oath Elementary. Huh? Uh, the fuck was that? Stop! You have to stop this! Please don't kill her! This has nothing to do with this! How pathetic! Watch out, bud. Yeah. I got the real Book of Shadows. When Aiko opened her eyes, she found me standing in front of her. I had one of, I had one of my arms outstretched, obviously having blocked something with it. My arm had protected Aiko from a charging mouth, almost as a shield would. Are you okay, Aiko? Ayumi, what power is this? When did you? 
Of course, Kishinuma, Mochita, Nakashima, and Ms. Kuan were all there too. Thank God, everybody's still alive. That filthy brat in the red dress isn't with you? Something's wrong. What's going on? Ah, I see. Your aura's color a little off. It's got the hue of someone who's repeating a moment in time. You can tell that, can you? Did you just laugh at me, you bitch? You think you can fuck with me? I'll mess you up, you little piece of shit! Oh, dang! How did you fall? You hit him! Just stop! Your plan is here! Stop talking and kill him! I wouldn't be so cocky if I were you, Ayumi Shinazaki. Just who do you think I am? I'm the one destined to rule here! A surviving member of the Yagora, the last Mizuto! Is that so? You are so dead. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Ayumi! With the wisdom of the witches! You just don't get it, do you? Stand down, imposter! What? Why do you have that? You told me it was gone! Were you just playing a sick joke on me? As if he were in a position to accuse me of deception. I'll be taking back the contents of that book now. My book of shadows roared a bit hard and bit hard into the false book of shadows. Yeah, cry about it, cry about it. And stop. Stop! Mizuto was in a total panic, but it didn't stop. It wouldn't. The Book of Shadows, my Book of Shadows, completely devoured the imposter. Damn you! It licked out, boy! The Book of Shadows' tongue stretched out like a whip, cracking itself at Mizuto. He said, get out of here, boy. You ain't worthy. Oh, dang. Drop my phone. You need to stop. It'll eat you too, you know. It needs to eat him. Let this man die. Hey, Sadoshi, I'm going to pin him down. Help me out. You bet. Hold still now, okay? Bro, it's satisfied. It's over. You're too much of a danger to everyone, so we're going to tie you up. I produced a handkerchief in my pocket. I'll do it. But she held Misato's wrist together. Y'all should have killed his ass. Another earthquake. Why? We stopped the Sephiroth from activating. It's not over yet. Did you really think you could hold down the Nirvana all by yourself? The Nirvana that's been gathered and eaten by that book does not represent the whole of the Book of Shadows. I told you before, didn't I? The Nirvana has a core separate from that which gives shape to Heavenly Host, and that core possesses a consciousness all on its own. The core has its own consciousness. Is that what Sachiko meant by the person in the Nirvana's core? The core's thoughts will activate the Sephiroth of knowledge, using the real world in the Nirvana as one bringing it to its knees, with or without my intervention. My goal in all this was to gain control over the decidedly berserk core of this dimension. But you stopped that from happening, leaving no other outcome for your world than a gradual, disorderly, and chaotic destruction. So, what are you gonna do about it? I'll lock in. I'll do what you couldn't. I'll finish it. I'll complete this book. 
Is that so? Well, let's see if what you can manage then. Let's see if the little coward who always relied on her big sister and her friends has finally grown a spy. The Book of Shadows course sleeps somewhere in this nirvana. To try to confront the will of the witch who created this book. See what happens. A normal human would go mad a hundred times over. The prospect of us of us going mad seemed to amuse him. He smirked. Ochida, Nakashima, Kishinuma, Miss Kuwan, and Aiko. Thank you for coming here. I'm truly happy to have friends like you. But you all need to return to the real world now. Do you have a way back? We're all set. The spirit shard of my ever after stones is almost at capacity. So we can finally get home. That's great to hear. What about you, Shinazaki? I have something I need to take care of. What is it? Whatever it is, you can count on us to help out, Shinazaki. We came here to bring you back after all. Isn't that right, everyone? You bet. That's right, class rep. No, I'll be fine. I'll head back on my own soon. No way, no how. Let us help you, Shinazaki. It'll go faster if we all do it than if it's just, if it's just you. Whoa! The gremlin! What's wrong? Can no one else see her? What's wrong, Naomi? Suddenly, a vision flashed in Naomi's head, as if she were seeing through someone else's eyes for a moment. <laughs> oh, that's the room we couldn't get in before. I forgot all about Yuka. Big brother! Big brother, I'm scared! Somebody help me! Naomi! Hey, snap out of it, Naomi! Sadoshi? Naomi. Thank goodness. This is bad! What do you mean? What happened? Just now I. I saw a girl in black just now. She jumped down from here. A girl in black? Were her eyes black too by any chance? Yeah, they were. I didn't see anything. Did you, Sadoshi? Nothing here either. It was the gremlin. Sachiko's twin sister, the spirit of an unborn baby who died in utero. I brought these here from Makina Shinazaki's home without thinking, and in doing so, I brought the gremlin spirit over here from the real world as well. Teeth. They look like baby teeth. Yeah. She's a strong evil spirit who's been eating away at the world around her indiscriminately for some time. My company have been after her for a quite a while now, and it seems her powers have increased quite significantly since coming to this dimension. Those might just serve you well as a protective charm. I think you should hold on to them, Machida. But Shinazaki, if I have them, you won't. I have this book. Miss Kuan, I just saw that girl. I just saw what that girl in black saw from this eye. Naomi removed the patch from her left eye. Her injury hadn't healed in the slightest. Her left eye was clouded over with blisters, blanketing the pupil that spelled out her name out the name Sachi. That looks bad. 
Nakashima's eye is the result of a spirit's will literally burning itself into her. She's been using eye drops made from holy water, however, so she would, so she should recover in time. The image she saw, however, may in fact be a reflection of what the spirit itself was seeing. If that's the case, then Satoshi, this, this, this gremlin girl went into the underground bomb shelter, and I definitely heard Yuka's voice in there. What? That's impossible. She should be at home right now. No, no, she is most definitely here. Satoshi Mochida. Your little sister is such a very doting girl. When I told her her brother was in danger, she wasted no time at all following me into this dimension. Is Yuka seriously here? People like you who've been to Heavenly Hells have a special aura about you. One that signifies you've been to the loop of death, as it were. And she, among all of you, came into direct contact with Sachiko and established a bond of sympathy with her, giving her quite the well of spiritual energy to draw from. Oh, she's talking about... He's talking about that Book of Shadows chapter when Yuka was, like, taking care of Sachiko and helping her out all the time. Really, I can think of no one more well-suited to this world than she. You rat bastard! I summon her here to be used as the water conveyance through which the Nirvana's core be delivered to my new Book of Shadows. That's unconscionable. Even at this very moment, I'm squeezing every last bit of spirit energy from her in the school's basement. But well, now that my book's gone, she's of no further use to me at all. So you best hurry if you plan to get back to her. Sachi's on her way. The gremlin's on her way there right now, after all. <laughs> Wait, Miss Kuan, I'm going too. But with your eye the way it is. No, I'm going. I want to help save Yuka as quickly as possible. I understand. Let's go then. Oh. Alright, you stay with Kishinuma and Shinazaki, okay? Once we fully rescued Yuka, we'll come back for you. Okay, sis. Aiko was looking down and turning slightly red as she said that. Miss Kuan did not fail to notice. Her face lit up brighter than I'd ever seen it. Alright, Kishinuma. Please look after my sister if you would. Sure thing. She actually called me sis. I can't even remember the last time that happened. Does your eye hurt? You look like you're suffering quite a bit. Hold on just a moment. Yeah, I brought some eye drops. Hopefully they'll keep the pain under control. Thanks. Shinazaki. Could you join the search party too, Kishinuma? You never know what'll be down there. The more guys, the better, I think. But, but what about you? I'll be fine. I have the book. This jerk can't intimidate me anymore. Well, you certainly seem confident. I'll be back in a jiff. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Ayumi. Ayumi. Ayumi, untie me. Just sit still. When everything's over, I'll take you back. Are you serious, Ayumi? Yeah, I think even somebody like this must have people who'd miss him if he were gone. Does that matter? Kill this nigga. Like hell I do. What's wrong with you, bitch? I don't need your pity or your charity. You think you're so much better than me, huh? Misato suddenly began to act hysterical. As if my words had struck a nerve somewhere deep in the core of his soul. Aiko was not amused. She stared him down and easily won. He quickly regained his composure, however, and took a more casual, more relaxed posture. His tone almost made it sound like he was getting ready to strike a deal with us. <laughs> Tell me, Ayumi. Do you know what the driving force of this world is? 
It's malice. Malice is the heart of one person as he knowingly deceives another. Or the genuine wish for misfortune to befall one fellow man. It's really no different than a curse. But unlike curses, it's not the hatred of the victim that spawns it, but that of the assailant. I could hardly wait to see where this was going. I was ready for him to throw me a curveball and try to trick me into helping him. And all I could think was, good luck. To the spiritual organization my grandpa built, Yagora fell to ruin. My asshole ancestors who had no ability to speak of, I should note, were persecuted as heretics. But leaving the Book of Shadows to fall into the hands of a dangerous organization of black magic practitioners like Martuba's tomb just has bad news written all over it. That's what Gramps thought anyway. So he stole the forbidden tomb, smuggled it away from their grubby hands, and secretly entrusted it to the Shinazaki family. Everything he did, he did to save the world. He was practically burning with righteous fury. But naturally, his peers thought it was nuts. They called him, at best, a fake, a swindler, or a downright monster. They even burned his house down. They know exactly how he died, but I know he was really nuts by then. Lost his marbles and died while running around town like a chicken with his head cut off, I hear. His son, then my father, committed suicide. And as did my mother, wrapped things up for the town folk nice and clean like. And no matter why I moved since then, there'd always be pieces of shit tracking me down, breaking my windows, cursing my family name. It was starting to get real old. I'm supposed to care why? I shrunk back for a bit. I definitely wasn't expecting this from Misuto, nor was I quite certain how to react to it. After my parents died, reporters started swarming my house day after day. They were eating this shit up. They tried to catch me off guard and turn anything I said into news stories with headlines like Creepy local couple commit suicide, infiltrating the hair-raising occult home. They asked me if my parents ever told me their regrets or if I had any juicy stories of horrible family misfortunes. At one point, one of them even held up a sheet of loose leaf paper that said something like, It doesn't matter if it's true or not as long as it's entertaining. But the thing is, Despite what the press seemed to think of them, my parents never once cursed the world. His eyes were swimming. I didn't get the sense that he was lying about any of this. Every day at three, they'd give me a piece of gum to chew on as a treat. Even though they had no money whatsoever, it made me so happy and always got me to stop crying. I felt for him. I genuinely felt for him. One day before I consciously realized what I was doing, I doused one of those Papa Rasshole's coats in lighter fluid and set the fucker on fire! Wound up getting me thrown in juvie. No. Just try to tell me your ancestors weren't exactly the same as mine, Ayumi. And it's not just us. Jealousy? Pride, bullying, it's all the same damn thing when you get down to it. Practitioners like us aren't the ones responsible for the curse. We're not the ones spreading misfortune. It's the piece of shit peasants who are scared of us that root it all. But hey, that's what it means to be different from ordinary humans. Right, Ayumi? That's what the real world's like. If you're different you're, and you're a pariah, you're evil. <laughs> I don't like the way dad and mom talked about what you decided to do with your life, sis. It was all decency this and keeping up appearances that, but they were talking about you. And you always put everything you've got into everything you do. It's really insulting. You know, he flashed me a kindly smile and patted me on the head. Ayumi, you shouldn't speak ill of mom and dad. We broke off from the main line and began living peacefully in order to spare our families for what would be surely be a sad fate. And it makes perfect sense for them to oppose actions that they might feel that they feel might lead us down that road again. The warning surely comes from a place of kindness. You see, this curse called malice is spreading across the world, town by town. Your ancestors went through so many struggles, and look how they were treated. What value is there in a world where superior specimens of humanity are attacked by the masses? 
Bro thinks he's Ghetto Suguru. Is that why you take people's lives? Overpopulation has polluted the earth with pigs. And I feel it's my duty to dent their numbers and squash their holier than thou ideals by tying them down with fear. I can control them. Misuto slammed his foot on the ground. For what it's worth, my sister would never agree with you. I still felt for him. I pitied him. My eyes were starting to mist over as well. I wanted nothing more. I wanted more than anything to reach him, to save him. And no way was too kind for her own good. Like stupidly kind. We fought about that code. We fought about that a lot. So what you said about her being your mentor, that part's true. She was the only person I ever opened up to aside from my parents. Despite how short a time we had together, I thought of her as a real partner in crime. She was my companion. And as someone with no relatives, that was the only time I ever felt like I would love another human being. I never met a single other person who has such an excess of kindness and forgiveness in her heart, and I doubt I ever will. My eyes widened. As Misuto's eyes became more distant when he spoke about Hinoe, it's like he was staring into the past. His whole facial expression reflected such incredible loneliness. So you and sis were... Still, sacrificing yourself to save someone else's bullshit. It's hypocrisy pure and simple. Hurting yourself for any reason just winds up hurting everyone else around you. Would you die in the place of someone who's trying to commit suicide? Your family would be sick with grief. That doesn't seem right, does it? I couldn't answer. I've been repenting the actions that led to my sister's death this whole time. And I really couldn't argue with what Misuto was telling me. Compassion for others is strictly the domain of superior humans. But because they forgive everyone without exception, and they don't understand what it means to question or doubt, they get assaulted. Physically, sexually, for no other reason than because people are naturally malicious. This was the first time I'd ever heard of this, and it was a hard pill to swallow. All I could remember were the smiles, and those were as genuine as could be. But behind them, there may have been hidden wounds caused by people taking advantage of her gentle nature in downright unfathomable ways. And that sweet, kindly Hinoe is no longer in this world. Rumor has it she died to save a greedy asshole who was meddling in matters that couldn't possibly understand. How much does that poor girl have to sacrifice? How much pain must a superior human being like her be subjected to? I'm not finished yet. This world needs to be corrected. And it's up to me to show those peasants those pictures, what their sins have begotten. So what do you say, Ayumi? Untie me. You're in no way, sister. You wield the full power of the Shinazaki lineage. You have the makings of a chosen one. Why don't we work together and unite this world as one? Because that's not what my sis would want. Ayumi, you Sold the bag. Grab the book. Wrong answer, Ayumi. <coughs> Misuto stared down at me with an ice cold look in his eyes, tossing away the handkerchief that he that was supposed to have been tied securely around his wrist. <laughs> Both hands. Does that mean he could have broken free anytime he wanted? Grab the book, Ayumi! You're a fool as well. Being devoured alive by the Nirvana is supposedly quite an agonizing way to go, I hear. I was showing you mercy earlier when I tried to kill you with my knife. Wait! I'll let you on a little secret, Ayumi. You've already been purging the world yourself, but you don't even know it. Those countless black shadowy figures you've been exercising here in Heavenly Hosts? 
Those are the spirits of human beings. Live human beings from the real world or formerly live. What? Because the real world and Nirvana have begun fusing together, human souls have been stumbling halfway in through these cracks and appearing here as black shadows. Which would make you, I believe, a murderer. Each time you kill one of these figures, the other half of the soul dies with it. That person's body is snapped in half in the real world, dying instantly and mysteriously. I'm supposed to care why? I was still laid out flat on the ground, reeling from the punch and the shock of this new revelation alike. I clenched my teeth and tried to pull myself up, desperately waiting to be wanting to recapture this fugitive. But I was too unstable to keep my balance, plummeting back to the floor right away. This is too painful to watch. Why would you even come in when you're so hopelessly unprepared? I'm off. Until the world ends, you might as well just keep sitting right there and thinking about what you did. Wait! Misato! Don't shout my fucking name, bitch! See you around, Nayumi. You were a dumbass through and through, but I gotta say, you definitely take after your sister with that straight-laced attitude of yours. Yeah, Yumi definitely was a dumbass. It's the real thing. I finally have the real thing. If I could just... Satsuki! If I could just return to the Nirvana's core to this, the book would be complete. And I'll be unto, I'll be like unto a god, uh huh? You, what do you want? And how are you still alive? It was Satsuki. She was standing directly in Misuto's path. Her entire face was stained in red, with only her white eyes breaking through. She wavered in place as she stared directly, wordlessly into Misuto's soul. Oh, she's a spirit. A moment later, Misato noticed something else behind her. One of the red helms that had wandered to school. You too! What happened to Garden Yuka? Why are you even here, you worthless tin can? Suddenly, Satsuki's head split right down the middle into eight equally sized portions like a flower budding. These petals then closed around Misato's head, tearing it clean off his body. Blood spurted from his neck and his appendages twitched. No matter how obnoxious they were in life, everyone's always so calm and peaceful when they're dead. If only you'd never gotten your hands on this book. It's really a pathetic end, Misuto. I wish I could have killed you myself as promised. But you see, there were already a lot of red marks here, weren't there? That's because we Martubas had already come to investigate. This girl you brought with you was a member of the Martuba's tomb herself, in fact. What? Satsuki was a member of the Martubas? This sucks. The Order is going to get so cocky once they hear the Yagoras are gone. I'm not looking forward to that. A guard suddenly grabbed Satsuki's hair and pulled her in. Honestly. I told you to stay with Yuka Mochida, didn't I? You monster. Wow! Big brother! Satsuki! Cleanse this child's sins. Lord hath spoken, no soul may reside in trees that have died. Yuka was in a seemingly empty room, though she could hear prayers echoing around her. 
They sounded like the prayers one might expect from a demonic exorcism. I'm scared. Where am I? Big brother, I don't believe it. Big brother wouldn't lie to me. He can't be dead. Shut up. Misuto's dead. Holy W, bro. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoy it, like, subscribe, read a comment, and read them all. Tap into the next one. Bro, I'm I'm about to like mess around and have this game done by like tomorrow, probably. What time is it? It's only 11. I might fuck around and just hop back on a little later after I sit down for a second. This is so crazy. Man, this game is peak. I love this game so much. Right now, I'm this I might right now I might like this more than the first sports party. And that being said, that may, the first sports party is my favorite video game in ever. So this might just be my new favorite game ever, bro. On the real. But peace out. I love you guys. Tap into the next one.